Could it all be a bad dream or a nightmare? Is it my imagination or have we lost our minds? It's surreal. It's just not believable. A grand absurdity, a great deception, a delusion of momentous proportions. Based on preposterous notions and on ideas whose time should never have come. Simplicity grossly distorted and complicated. Insanity passed off as logic. Grandiose schemes built on falsehoods with the morality of Ponzi and Madoff. Evil described as virtue. Ignorance pawned off as wisdom. Destruction and impoverishment in the name of humanitarianism. Violence, the tool of change. Preventive war is used as a road to peace. Tolerance delivered by government guns. Reactionary views in the guise of progress. An empire replacing the republic. Slavery sold as liberty. Excellence and virtue traded for mediocrity. Socialism to save capitalism. A government out of control. Unrestrained by the Constitution, the rule of law, or morality. Bickering over petty politics as we, as we collapse into chaos. The philosophy that destroys us is not even defined. We have broken from reality, a psychotic nation. Ignorance with a pretense of knowledge replacing wisdom. Money does not grow on trees, nor does prosperity come from a government printing press or escalating deficits. We're now in the midst of unlimited spending of the people's money, exorbitant taxation, deficits of trillions of dollars spent on a failed welfare warfare system, an epidemic of cronyism, unlimited supplies of paper money equated with wealth, a central bank that deliberately destroys the value of the currency in secrecy, without restraint, without nary a whimper. Yet, cheered on by the pseudo-capitalists of Wall Street, the military-industrial complex, and Detroit. We police our world empire with troops on 700 bases and in 130 countries around the world. A dangerous war now spreads throughout the Middle East and Central Asia of innocent people being killed as we become known as the torturers of the 21st century. We assume that by keeping the already known torture pictures from the public's eye, we will be remembered only as a generous and good people. If our enemies want to attack us only because we are free and rich, proof of torture would be irrelevant. The sad part of all this is that we have forgotten what made America great good and prosperous. We need to quickly refresh our memories and once again reinvigorate our love, understanding and confidence in liberty. The status quo cannot be maintained considering the current conditions. Violence and lost liberty will result without some revolutionary thinking. We must escape from the madness of crowds now gathering. The good news is the reversal is achievable through peaceful and intellectual means and fortunately the number of those who care are growing exponentially. Thank you Mr. Speaker. The last nail is being driven into the coffin of the American Republic, yet Congress remains in total denial as our liberties are rapidly fading before our eyes. The process is propelled by unwarranted fear and ignorance as to the true meaning of liberty. It is driven by economic myths, fallacies, and irrational good intentions. The rule of law is constantly rejected, and authoritarian answers are offered as panaceas for all our problems. Runaway welfareism is used to benefit the rich at the expense of the middle class. Who would have ever thought that the current generation and Congress would stand idly by and watch such a rapid disintegration of the American Republic? Our presidents can now on their own order assassinations including American citizens, operate secret military tribunals, engage in torture, enforce indefinite imprisonments without due process, order searches and seizures without proper warrants gutting the Fourth Amendment, ignore the 60-day rule for reporting to the Congress the nature of any military operation as required by the War Power Resolution, continue the Patriot Act abuses without oversight, 
wage war at will. Treat all Americans as suspected terrorists at airports with TSA groping and nude x-ray. And the Federal Reserve accommodates by counterfeiting the funds needed and not paid for by taxation and borrowing, permitting runaway spending, endless debt, and special interest bailouts. And all of this is not enough. The abuses and usurpations of the war power are soon to be codified in the National Defense Authorization Act now rapidly moving its way through Congress. Instead of repealing the 2001 authorization for the use of military force, as we should now that bin Laden is dead and gone, Congress is planning to massively increase the war power of the president. Though an opportunity presents itself to end the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, Congress, with bipartisan support, obsesses on how to expand the unconstitutional war power of the president he already holds. The current proposal would allow a president to pursue war anytime, any place, for any reason without congressional approval. Many believe this would even permit military activity against American suspects here at home. The proposed authority does not reference the 9-11 attacks. It would be expanded to include the Taliban and associated forces, a dangerously vague and expansive definition of our potential enemies. There is no denial that the changes in Section 1034 totally eliminates the hard-fought-for restraint on presidential authority to go to war without congressional approval achieved at the Constitutional Convention. Congress's war authority has been severely undermined since World War II, beginning with the advent of the Korean War, which was fought solely under a UN resolution. Even today, we're waging war in Libya without even consulting with the Congress, similar to how we went to war in Bosnia in the 1990s under President Clinton. The three major reasons for, the, for our constitutional conventions were to guarantee free trade and travel among the states, make gold and silver legal tender, and abolish paper money, and strictly limit the executive branch's authority to pursue war without congressional approval. But today, Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, gold and silver are illegal. The Interstate Commerce Clause is used to regulate all commerce at the expense of the free trade among the states. And now, the final nail is placed in the coffin of Congressional responsibility for the war power, delivering this power completely to the President, a sharp and huge blow to the concept of our Republic. In my view, it appears that the fate of the American Republic is now sealed, unless these recent trends are quickly reversed. The saddest part of this tragedy is that all these horrible changes are being done in the name of patriotism and protecting freedom. They are justified by good intentions while believing the sacrifice of liberty is required for our safety. Nothing could be further from the truth. More sadly is the conviction that our enemies are driven to attack us for our freedoms and prosperity and not because of our deeply flawed foreign policy that has generated justifiable grievances and has inspired the radical violence against us. Without this understanding, our endless, unnamed, and undeclared wars will continue and our wonderful experiment with liberty will end. And I yield back the balance of my time. the American political discourse become so perverted that candidates like Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich can say with a straight face that Ron Paul's foreign policy is dangerous. How did we get to the point where these men aren't even taken seriously? These men who never once put on a uniform running against the veteran that they are opposing. How is this possible? I served as a sergeant on a Marine Corps Civil Affairs team in the Fallujah area in 2004 and found out the hard way that the greatest enemies of the Constitution to which I swore an oath, to which Ron Paul swore an oath, to which every military service member swears an oath, are not to be found in the sands of some far off land, but rather right here at home. 
It is undeniable what our government has become. It is undeniable what our foreign policy has become because poor men continue to die in rich men's wars. For far too long, the voice of the troops has been kept from the American political dialogue. But not anymore. You want to support the troops? It's time to start listening to them. Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my uh, colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? What if propping up regi repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing pa Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced. What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil? What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position is to reject military intervention and managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations? What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iraq? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? That our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security, that it never changes from one administration to the next? What if war and preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens if my concerns are completely unfounded? Nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time.